Hey, Richard. How Hi, are Kevin. You? So what do you think of our wide open kitchen? I love it. Quite right? a space. Yeah, but it was not always this way. We had to fight for it. So there was a wall here that we pushed forward, another wall that we actually pushed backward. I remember. All the walls in the middle went away, and we even fought for some extra ceiling height. Tommy and the designers decided to grab three or four extra inches by raising the ceiling and making this structural ceiling the finished look above the two islands. I absolutely loved it until right? we actually, well, I loved it until I had to think about running plumbing. Whoa. There's a bathroom right upstairs here at a laundry. Wait, does this hurt you? Well, normally the hardest pipe to run is the big pipe from the toilet. So you look right here, here it is right here. This is a three inch PVC pipe. It comes down this way with pitch. There's a perfect joist bay for us right here. Here's our laundry. Here's our lavatory coming in. Now it continues with pitch this way, turns, goes down to the basement. End of story over there. So if the big hard pipe is in, no problem, we're all set. Well, every single plumbing fixture has to have a trap on it. Now normally on a toilet, it's built right into the toilet itself. Right. But you've seen traps. You've seen them underneath kitchen sinks, under lavatories, or in our case, under the bathtub. Yeah, and it basically is just a, a, a way to stop sewer gases from coming back into the house, right? It's a critical part of any plumbing system. Here's a cutaway. Mm. You can see the trap right here. The bathtub lets go of the water. The weight of the water now pushes down right here, and there's always a water seal. Water pushes down, makes the water lift over this, and goes down the drain. But there's always supposed to be a water seal. And because the water stays right here, those gases can't get back through the water, and they can't get into the house. You know, Kevin, it's not just sewer gas, though. If sewer gas wants to come this way. You also have to worry about insects coming this way or vermin. Yeah, we don't want those. Right, and when you see this, you actually understand the full plumbing system. Here's the trap. Here's the drain, and here's the vent right here. Now, when you have water running this way, like a bathtub letting go, you need a place for air to come back in, and that's where the vent is critically important. Okay. But we've seen these traps underneath bathtubs before. And I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, you just put them underneath the bathtub so it would go below the second floor right there. You'd tuck it nicely into the joist yep. bay, and it fits. And that would be perfect if we actually had the bathtub in the bedroom. Oh, wait, it's just, so where's the bathroom? The bathroom's oh. over here. <laughs> so here's where it lines up oh. for where the trap is. Yeah, we definitely can't cut there. Correct. So what we have to do is find a way to get the drain from the bottom of the tub over across the top of this tripler without drilling it out. You can't move the bathtub? No, you don't want to make the bedroom smaller. You don't want to make the bathroom smaller. So what we'll do is come across the top. We'll get the trap right in this bay right here, and we'll run back with pitch this way. Huh, how are we going to do that? Let me show you. So up over the garage and kitchen, we have the two new bedrooms right here. We've got a laundry. And here's a full bathroom with an extra lavatory right out here. There's the toilet that's going to be right here. You saw that roughed in. Here's the lavatory. And here's where our tub location is. You can really see firsthand. This is the back side of that beautiful ceiling that you guys So put drain in. on this side, and that's what we can't cut through. Correct. So now you can really see firsthand the issue. Here's the standard cast iron bathtub right here. And this is the bath waste and overflow, a standard component on any bathtub, and by code you have to have it. It has a drain, it has the overflow right here. If you look inside, water goes down right here, but this is a very important safety feature called the overflow. If you ever were filling the tub, you didn't pay attention, you would not want the water to go up over the edge, it would go down through the overflow. And as importantly, if you would fill it up to this point and then get in, you don't want that water that you displace to also go over the edge. So the overflow is here. It typically comes down right here, down through the trap, as we see it all the time. But this is way too low for us. That's right. So historically, our only alternative was this. This is a side outlet bath waste and overflow. So look at this. See, see the difference? Instead of coming down through the bottom, mm. it now comes off to the side where you can go any way you want to go with it that way. So that finished ceiling would be under it. We wouldn't have to cut through it. That's right. So oh. any of these bath waste and overflows need to have three components. One is the drain or the shoe. The other is the overflow, and then the other is some sort of actuator to make the drain work. And those two are connected. Right. And this, for years, was our only alternative. But Kevin Bylow, our plumbing contractor, actually has found an alternative. Hey, Kevin, so you brought us a better mouse trap? I believe I got a fix to the problem. Right out of the box, we have the drain, the overflow, and an actuator. Okay. Everything we'll need. And so, what, I mean, how is this going together? Well, it allows me to take inch and a half PVC fittings and just glue them in any direction, making offsets to get to my T, to get to my trap. No way. So you can really go left or right, up or down, six inches, eight inches, whatever you want. Wherever I got to go. And if I understand this correctly, sort of in relation to the, um, the standby here, we've got the two drains, so these two are equal. And then we've got the overflow, these two are equal. Correct. And instead of actuating with the chain, we're going to use the cable for a pop-up. <laughs> that is pretty clever. So this is what we're installing. That's the one. 
we start by installing the shoe using some putty and a special wrench provided by the manufacturer. We repeat the process on the overflow using the same wrench. All right, so now you can see with dry fit, you can see our shoe and our overflow right here. Right. And what we've been able to accomplish is to move this trap over from the center to what is our joist bay downstairs and get across that tripwire. And we could have made this assembly anything we needed, That's and right. now it's in exactly the right spot. That's right. But Beautiful. there's one more measurement to take, and look at this. See at the bottom of that shoe, it comes down about two and a half inches. Mm -hmm. So look at this. Here's our subfloor. Here's the top of our ceiling right here. And that's about inch and a half. So this ceiling is still fighting us. Absolutely. So we raise the floor to get us up to about two and a half inch, and that accepts the shoe. But look at this. We're going to have to notch this subfloor right here across the tripler, go down to get our trap in this joist bay. Let me get clear. Look at that, huh? Perfect. All right, from where that trap first wanted to be right here to where it ended up is what, about eight inches? Not very far. A little bit of work to get it here, though. Yep. It'll now sit up in that joist bay perfectly, doing its job for the next hundred years. A lot of work, but you saved Tommy's ceiling and you got the trap you needed. I hope he says thank you. I doubt he will. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.